Hello everybody, this is Joshua with KI5SIJ, all things ham radio, batteries, and more. In this video, I'm going to share with you my personal portable stations that I put together for use with doing parks on the air or any other type of outside radio events. I have actually put together a kit that I take with me consist of three different boxes one box with my radios one box with my antennas and one box with my power solutions so i want to go through this right quick and show you what i have and what i found works best for me this is what i'm currently using i have done some parks on the air i've really had some fun doing outside type uh, radio events so without further ado i'll go ahead and get straight into it i recorded a quick video showing how i transport my radios i have one of these dry boxes i believe i bought this one from dx engineering if i remember right I will put a link to, to that particular box in the description of the video, but I'm just showing how I actually have them packed into this foam, and it's actually pretty, uh, pretty nice how they actually fit in there. I've taken the box around to a few different places, and it's actually worked very well for me. So I actually have four radios packed into this box. I'll go through what the radios are uh, a little bit detail, a little bit further in the video, but right here, I'm just mainly demonstrating that I actually got four whole radios into this box. And I actually have all of the mics and all of the cables and everything necessary to get that all connected together. All right, so I'll go a little bit deeper into it now. What you're seeing is that the actual box itself, I believe I bought that from DX Engineering. I think they had a sell on them and I bought a couple of them and these have been really nice. Inside of that case, as I previously mentioned, I do have uh, four, uh, actually I said four, it's actually three radios. I actually have three radios and an antenna tuner. It's not four radios, it's actually three radios and an antenna tuner for my HF radio. And I have all the necessary cables, all the necessary power plugs and mics and everything all stuffed into this one box. We'll start off by talking about my HF rig. What I have here is a Yaesu FT891. And this particular radio seems to work really well for portable operations. I've used it on several occasions. I paired it up with this LDG Z11 Pro 2. And it seems to work very well with this uh, particular Yaesu radio. I actually bought the cable that connects the two together. You can hit the tune button on the radio and it, it knows what to do with it. Uh, this particular LDG tuner works great for this radio. This particular radio, I like it because it doesn't seem to use as much power as what some of the other mobile radios do. I personally did some testing with it and found that generally I can keep it under about 17 amps even when pushing a full 100 watts. It works really great for mobile, especially if you're running off of a portable battery solution like I do. This is a great mobile setup here. Another radio that I have in here is a little QRP radio. I know they're not uh, very highly thought of, but it's a little Zygu X6100 radio. Um, I've messed with this quite a bit. Uh, it's, it's pretty neat just to mess around with QRP. I most definitely would rather an uh, ICOM 705, but getting started in QRP, I just grabbed this. Uh, it was on sale when I bought it. So I just grabbed it and threw it in the box. And I have messed with this a few times. But I made some good contacts on this one before. And it's, it's, it's a fun little radio. Like I said, I'd much rather have an ICOM 705. But this one will serve the purpose until I get one of those. That brings me over to this Anytone. This is a VHF UHF radio. This is one of the extra radios I had lying around, so I just threw it in the box. And the reason I chose this one is because it has APRS. And I know this particular radio has given me some fits in the past, specifically with audio on the mic. And after a bunch of research, I found out that it had to do with a firmware level problem. And I was able to resolve that by going to an older firmware. But after I got that resolved, uh, I decided to just keep this and put it in my go box. 
it's a great little radio for what I would need it for. I would generally carry uh, my Anytone uh, HT with me, but this would be great if I want to do uh, APRS while I'm doing some sort of a outside event or maybe even on the road with the fifth wheel. This would be a great uh, addition to have in the RV if I wanted to set up a station while I'm uh, camping out wherever I'm at. So yeah, I, I threw this in there primarily because it had APRS, but it's also VHF, UHF, and it was just a spare radio, so I threw it in the box. I'm going to move to the next section. I'm going to show you my antennas, and this isn't very profound. There's a couple of pieces of information I'm going to talk about that I do not have photos of, but I will add links to them in the description below. What I'm going to talk about is my antenna setup. I actually keep all my antenna stuff in one of these orange boxes like this orange ammo can. I just kind of have it all crammed in there and it serves a purpose. It's great for what I'm trying to do and it allows me to, to get all my antennas out to where I'm going and get them to where they're all, they're, they're all together in one box. I grab it. I know all my stuff is in there for antennas and I'm good to go. I actually have four different antennas in there, but I'm only going to talk about three of them because I only actually use three. I'm going to start with some coax. I'm going to always have some coax. I generally carry two 50 foot pieces of coax with me. This is some RG8X here. It's light, it's easy to grab, and I generally bring at least two pieces of RG8X. If I'm going to plan on using my VHF UHF radio, I'll grab a third piece of coax to bring with me, but I generally bring two 50 foots for my HF. I'll generally set up two or three different antennas and run them to wherever I'm working and just use an antenna switch or maybe set up multiple radios depending on what we're doing all right so this is it looks kind of a mess right here and i taped up the calls because it's exposed wire and the day i ran this antenna last it was kind of raining and i was up in the woods running running ops that day doing parks on the air and i really wanted to get parks on the air done so i just taped up the call put it up and i went ahead and ran it probably wasn't the safest thing to do but it actually served a purpose and got me through my event but this is a 10 meter through 80 meter off center fed dx80 short i believe i bought it from gigapark but this little antenna works pretty well it's about 78 foot long and I have the longer version of this one as my permanent antenna at my home. It's actually about 144 foot long and it's the long version, which means it does not have the coil on it. And it's a 10 meter through 80 meter off center fed. I have it set up as an inverted V and I use this one the same way. I'll either use it as an inverted L or use it as an inverted V. I generally prefer the inverted V for me. It's quicker and easier to set up and it's always proven to work great for me. So I actually worked some DX on this thing whenever I was actually doing parks on the air the last time I used it. It's a great antenna. It's not very expensive and it has proven itself time after time for me. All right, and like I said, that was a 10 meter through 80 meter, and that one will do full legal limit on sideband. All right, and so this is a homemade 40 meter. Again, this is a homemade 40 meter Invis dipole that I made that I install about 36 inches above the ground. And this antenna was a lot of fun to play with on my last uh, POTA activation as well. I worked a couple of parks very close to me whenever I did my last uh, parks on the air. And this one was really fun, really fun to, to mess with. And uh, it's very simple to make. You just get one of these little uh, BNC to banana clip adapters here. And that's just some 16 gauge speaker wire uh, zip line that I split and just made the little antenna there and it works out great. This is the wiring for my AS2259 Invis antenna. I call it a double inverted V antenna. It's the Invis antenna that the military used for a long time. I think they may still use it, but it's designed for 40 meters and 80 meters Invis. And it actually has one set of antenna leads that go one way and then the other set go the other way so if you're looking at it from above it looks kind of like an x because you're running one set of dipoles one way and the other set going the opposite direction but they call it an as2259 
Invis antenna, and this particular antenna I also ran during my last photo activation, and it as well actually uh, had some very interesting results on it. So I was actually working some stations that were outside of Invis range on this antenna, even though I had it designed and set up for Invis. So we had some very strange things happening the last time I used it, but it was a great antenna to play with for sure. That kind of wraps up my three antennas I generally carry with me. That DX80 short off-center fed is kind of like my go-to antenna. It doesn't do 160, but it does do 10 through 80. This AS2259 was just something I was experimenting with and just had some fun with. So that wraps up the antenna segment of this video. I'm going to move on to my battery solution, my power solution. Let me go back. One thing I did not mention was the antenna that I use for my VHF UHF. Now, generally when I'm using all of this uh, equipment, I'm generally in my RV camping out in the middle of one of the state or federal parks. And that's when I did POTA the last time. We were at a state park and we did POTA in a national forest. And I did not set up my VHF UHF radio that time, but... I do carry with me a Diamond X200A antenna. It's about nine foot tall. And what I generally do is mount it on the back of my ladder. It has like some pipe mounts that I use. And I climb to the top of the ladder and actually raise this antenna up and mount it to the top railing of my ladder on the back of my RV. And it generally gets out pretty good. I've used it a couple times. It works great. It's actually the same model antenna I use at home on my VHF UHF radio. So I'll put a link to that in the description below as well. Moving on to the power solutions. I'm real big into building batteries for ham radio. I'm using lithium ion 18650 batteries to do that. And this is one of my first packs that I made in here. This pack doesn't look very big, but it has 48 cells in it. And this particular pack is around a 38 amp hours, 38 amp hours. So it's a pretty big, it actually is probably rated for more than that, but I have been able to confirm on typical use, I can get a little over 38 amp hours out of it. And that's with it running two radios, uh, with me only talking on one of them at a time, of course. But so what you're seeing in here, this is like a little standard plastic ammo can with my custom built lithium ion battery pack in here. And in the back left-hand corner, you see a silver thing with a red and black wire, a white wire on it. That is actually a voltage regulator that I use. And then in front of it is a solar, a solar charge controller, which I use to feed power into the battery from multiple sources. And then at the bottom left, you can barely see it, but there is a 10 to 24 volt relay that I use to turn the battery source on and off for safety purposes. I'm going to go to the next picture. I pulled it all out of the case so you can see it a little bit better. Power going in and out all goes through the solar charge controller. I use this little relay here to connect and disconnect the actual battery pack. And then there is a 30 amp breaker that is on all of this to keep it safe as well. And then the regulator on the right hand side, I use that to ensure that the voltage coming out of my battery pack stays at a consistent 13.8 volts and it supports up to 30 amps. This particular battery pack can actually hold a load up to almost 50 amps. Since I really don't use any more than about 20 amps total, this voltage regulator will handle the load just fine and uh, we have a 30 amp breaker in line on the battery pack so everything should be just fine and safe. So I've used this particular setup for almost a year and a half now. And this is what actually runs my VHF UHF station at home. And I have a second one just like this that I take on the road. But this particular one here is the one I use on my station at home. I actually have several of these kits that I put together like this. They're very easy to maintain, very easy to charge. But there is another third piece or another piece which is not seen in this video and that is my portable solar panel it is a 160 watt quad fold portable mobile solar panel and it's pretty uh, pretty lightweight i actually brought mine out to the last field day and used it out at field day to charge my battery pack 
it works as it's intended to. So I only pull it out anytime I'm operating outdoors or anytime I lose power at home and I need power to charge my battery. That is pretty much my mobile setup here. I have went through and showed you my battery solution and I will be doing more videos on the batteries. I do a lot of custom battery builds. Just for reference, I'm using a 320 cell lithium ion 18650 built a battery pack to power my vhf uhf and my hf icom 7610 at home so i can actually power my radios in my shack for about three weeks with the particular battery pack i'm using right now it's a little over 220 amp hours it does work pretty well these radios don't pull a lot of uh, power when in idle and whenever i'm not in the room i kill the power to conserve the battery so it does uh, work pretty well but as i mentioned i will be doing more videos regarding these battery packs how I build them. I will eventually be selling them on my website, hopefully. So that kind of covers my portable setup. I do use it for parks on the air. I've used it for some outside ops at home that I did just for testing purposes. And I plan on doing more parks on the air very soon. But that wraps up my video today on my go box for my radios, antennas, and batteries. Thank you for watching my video and I hope you have a great day.